Welcome to discrete random variables and probability distributions. All right, we're going to jump right in here. I'm not going to do a whole lot of review on this one because it's really a different idea that we're going to be starting to talk about. And we still have the idea of a sample space and event that we'll be talking about. But really what we're interested in is how do I measure an outcome and events, right? I have these events or out and outcomes. How do I measure them? Um, it's one thing to say, oh, well, this happens, but we need a way to measure them. And when I say measure them, I mean we're going to turn them into a number, okay? And that's the idea of a random variable. A random variable is a simply a function, x, that goes from the sample space, which we've already seen, to r, which is the real line, so all real numbers, okay? And it's, you can also write it mathematically as x goes from s to r. It's just a function. So if you're familiar with a function, this should be pretty easy. All right, it, I think of it as the scale on which we measure the outcome, which is exactly what I want to do. I want to measure this thing. Um, and so I need a way to turn it into a number because the outcome is not inherently a number. Or it might be, but extremely rarely is it actually a number. And since we don't know the value ahead of time, it's random. So you get this idea of a random variable, okay? And that's, that comes from the sample space, goes to the real lines. Pretty easy. And we're going to look through an example here, and you'll see that it's not as hard as it sounds. All right, so we've seen this example before. So suppose Noor is going to take three shots at a goal. Let M be if she misses the goal, and let S be if she scores the goal. So that's going to be our notation here. Notice that this isn't a number, okay? It's We're even recording M and S. We're not recording an actual value. So that should lead you to think, huh, maybe we need a way to turn this into a number, okay? So here we go. Here's our sample space, okay? We've seen this before. It's MMM, MMS, S, MSM, SMM, MSS, SMS, SSM, and SSS. Ugh, that's a tongue twister. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take these and we're going to map them to the real line. So I've made a real line here, and I made my random variable the number of scores out of three attempts. Okay. Well, how many could there be? Well, there's only three attempts, so at most there could be three scores, right? And since there's only three attempts, the least number of scores would be zero, right? You could make none of them. Okay. So they all could be misses. So, all we have to do is just assign the numbers, right? So, here, this first one gets assigned the value 0, okay? And then these three all have one score in it, okay? So, one score, one S in these, and these all get mapped to 1, okay? And then, likewise, these three all have two scores in them, so they get mapped to 2, and this one has all three scores, and it gets mapped to 3. So, bingo, we've found a way to map these. Now, the idea of the random variable is it maps all the values. Okay, it tells you how to map all the values to numbers. Uh, so, they're pretty easy to think about, but you can't think about it as being this maps to this number. It's everything is gets mapped. Okay, so if I were to write this down mathematically, uh, it has a very different look. So, remember, x is a function of an event or outcome. Um, so here, if it's zero, this is my event that it corresponded to. And if one, then these are the events I've correspond to. And this little symbol here means n, so it's just one of those. E is one of these. Um, or two, E is one of these. And three, E is going to be exactly this one. So this is just a simple way of just putting out our, um, values from what happened because thinking about it in terms of numbers is often much easier all right now we want to assign probabilities to this now that we've got them in terms of numbers we want to turn them into probabilities and one way of doing that is if we assume each outcome is equally likely then we can use this formula and here this uh double bar notation here looks like absolute values just means how many of them are in there Okay, it's just counting up how many objects are inside of those braces. So this is actually pretty easy to do. So if I were to do this, you have to remember that the sample space had altogether eight outcomes. And so here, how many are in the x equals zero? Well, that corresponds to the e equals to mmm, and there's one of those. Here we have s m her, uh, 
x equals 1, s, m, 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 s, m, 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 s. And there's three of those over 8. Similarly, there's three of these over 8. And similarly, these one of these over 8. And if you add it up, it actually adds up to 1. We're not forcing that to happen here, but it does add up to 1. All right, so that was if we said everything was equally likely. But what if it's not equally likely? Um, there are other ways to assign probabilities to this. Maybe she's really good. Maybe there's like a 50-50 chance that she'll score all three. Okay, and then there's a 25% chance that she'll score two of them, and a 15% chance she'll only score one, and a 10% chance that she'll score none. Okay, so this uh, there are different ways to assign these. I, I just mentioned the equally likely way because lots of people like to do things that way, but in this case, it's probably not the most realistic thing because she's playing soccer if she's taking a shot she's probably reasonably good at it so it's probably not just going to be the same equal probability of her hitting all of them as missing all of them so anyway just keep that in mind all right so when we do this we're assigning probability it's called a probability distribution so probability to x equals little x here so we're assigning it to all the values of x so each value of x gets a, a probability assigned to it so also i want to mention random variables are not unique nor of their probability distributions however usually what happens is the type of experiment dictates the random variable, which dictates the type of probability distribution, but not the exact values under it. All right, um, a random variable here, uh, we're going to change our notation a little bit. We're going to add this f of x onto the front of it, because this gets tiresome to write. So we're going to say this is a function that is equal to the probability that x equals little x. Okay, and here the random variable is considered to be discrete since it assigns a countable number of values, okay, x equals 1, 2, and 3, that or 0, 1, 2, and 3. You can count those. There's four numbers there. Uh, if it's not countable, we'll talk about that in the next video. All right, some properties of these probability distributions is these probabilities are always greater than or equal to 0. And that should be obvious because that comes from uh, the first or uh, one of the axioms of probability. And here it says the sum of the probabilities sum to 1. And that uh, is also in here because we've covered all the values of x, right? We said a probability distribution goes across all the values of x, which means that's going to map backwards to all of the sample space, which should give us a probability of our sample space is equal to 1. All right. Boy, we've covered a lot already and uh so we have a sample space we have an event we have a random variable that just assigns the numbers to our uh, outcomes uh so we have an equally likely outcome type idea we have discrete random variable it has counter number countable number of values uh discrete or a probability distribution here assigns probabilities to all values of x and here we have some properties of it now in the next video we're going to consider continuous random variables where things change up a little bit but we'll worry about that then so see you there